Hello and welcome to Warning Sign Wednesdays here with Respond. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am Amanda. I'm our Chief Program Officer here at Respond and I'm here to talk to you today about isolation. Um, isolation can take a few different forms and so I'm going to talk to you today about the two ways that I mainly think about isolation. Some signs that you might notice in a friend or a family member and some ways that you can help. So what is isolation? There's physical isolation, which might be an abuser telling their partner, there's this great opportunity in this other place and we should go there together. It'll be wonderful. It'll be a new start. It'll be us against the world, just you and me. And that can sound really enticing, especially if there's been some domestic violence going on or some verbal abuse going on and the survivor is thinking, you know, maybe that's what we need. We need a fresh start. So that can sound really enticing, but in reality, it can be really dangerous because this new location is an unknown place. The survivor may not have friends or family there. The survivor may not know the resources there. And so if the abuse escalates in that location, they're much less likely to be able to find the services and the resources to seek safety in this new place. So what can you do if you're hearing a friend talking about this great new move with their partner? If you have any inkling that things aren't feeling quite right about their relationship, this is a great opportunity for you to take that next step and start asking questions and talking to them about it. It can be simple things like just saying, you know, how did this come about? How are you feeling about it? Do you know anyone there? And talking to them about that connectedness and about being alone in this new place. Um, and you can mention to them that you're concerned about their safety and that you've seen other things and this next level feels concerning to you. Um, and if you're thinking about having that conversation but not feeling ready, you can reach out to respond and we can help you craft what you might want to say. And you can also give our number to that person and say, some of the things that I've heard from you make me concerned. I think that folks here might be a great resource for you to talk to. And I'll share with you our hotline number in a few minutes. Um, the other type of isolation that we often see is that more gradual cutting off of ties with a friends or family member for that survivor. So that can happen in a number of ways. The abuser may do things like show up to the person's work, which may alienate them from their friends at work. The abuser may say negative things about friends or family. They may say things about that jealousy piece. They may say, I don't want you talking to this person or that person because they don't respect you or they don't respect me. And you love me and you care about me and you wouldn't talk to someone who doesn't care about me in the same way that I care about you. So both isolating and strengthening that, that bond um, that can make it so hard for a survivor to seek help later. Um, and so that isolation can be very gradual. In the beginning, it may sound positive because it may be that jealousy that can sound really positive to us at some times. Um, so as a friend or a family member who might be noticing that this person is no longer contacting you, that you're not hearing from them, maybe they're now being late to work, and you're worried because this person used to be a regular part of your life, this is a really important time for you to reach out and let them know that you're concerned. It can be really hard in this time as they're isolating to get to them in order to offer support, but when you do have those moments, um, you can take that time to say, you know, I'm worried about you. I used to see you all the time, and now it seems like you're never around, and I care about you, and I want to know that you're doing well. And if they're open to having a little bit more of that conversation, you can continue to talk to them about how important it is to have both friends and family and your partner, and that someone who cares about you should want you to have a well-rounded group of friends and family around you. Um, you can also call us to seek out different ways to have that conversation and offer our information to that person that you're concerned about. We have domestic violence counselors who are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week on our hotline, which is at 617-623-5900. So you can call to ask about information for yourself, information about supporting other people, 
or you can pass our information to that person that you're concerned about and they can call directly. Information is confidential, so they don't have to share their name and we can just talk to them about what's going on and what they might want to do moving forward and give them some ideas of how to stay safer. So thank you very much for tuning in um, and we will be doing this again next week with a new topic of verbal abuse at one o'clock on Wednesday. And again, our hotline is 617-623-5900. And you can feel free to share this with hashtag warning sign Wednesday. Thank you very much.